Hi, my name is Jenny Baldwin and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the fifth grade math plus yellow unit 2 which covers geometry. This unit has been skipped for many students which is um, a good thing. Um, if it has not been skipped for you feel free to skip this unit as well and come back to it later because this unit covers skills. A lot of them are review and enrichment but also I'm going to show you the um, content weights for the CRCT. Of course, this year we're having the Georgia Milestones, and if I get an update on the content weights for the Georgia Milestones, I'll definitely send it your way. But right now, and I don't think this is going to change a whole lot, numbers and operations are 55% of the end of the year assessment. Measurement is 20% of the end of the year. Geometry is 15% and then algebra is 10%. So you can see that geometry is one of those skills that is not the most heavily weighted concept, but it is important because as they progress through middle school, it is going to become something that's more and more relevant. What we want students to focus on, especially in fifth grade, is being masters of base 10, powers of 10, multiplication, division, and fractions and of course doing multiplication and division with fractions so we really want kids to have a good understanding of all of those skills that deal with numbers and operations so if geometry um, is you know something that your child enjoys feel free to work on this unit but I personally recommend skipping it and then coming back to it later in the year because the Study Island Blue Ribbon is not going to assess this skill until later in the year. So let's head back to the OLS and take a glance at things. What I'm going to do is go, go through the main lessons that are in the student guide or the lesson guide as well so that you can see what is most important and what is not as important and what is enrichment and what is a critical foundational skill so that you can guide your student in the right direction. So first of all, when we go to the lesson guide, when you open it up, it's going to probably, if you haven't bookmarked certain pages, it's going to open up to the very first page, but you can open up this side tab, go straight to the geometry unit that we are working on, and then each lesson will show up just like that. So just open up that side tab. Now if you're looking for the answers within the units, the answers are right there in pink. So if your student is working on something, you can always double check their answers because they're going to be right there. You're going to see pages from their activity guide right there. So also if there's pages that say go to the resource section, make sure you go right here. Here's the geometry unit. There's lots of printable pages, but here's the extended problems um, sheet that is the very last unit or lesson in the unit and then the answer key which is also the last lesson in the unit and when you open these it's going to ask you to save them you can save it to your desktop you can save it to your documents folder you can rename it so definitely save it as something that you'll be able to find and remember but let's head over to the student guide and I'm gonna again go right to the very first lesson in the geometry unit for in the student guide. Um, this lesson is a review of fourth grade skills. Students in fourth grade used protractors to measure angles. So this is a great activity just to review that angles are measured differently and how to use a protractor. Students that are hands-on love getting a protractor and measuring angles. This is not going to be on the fifth grade Georgia assessment, but it is, like I said, something that students need to know. Um, what will be important is the vocabulary, so obtuse and acute, things like that. Also words like perpendicular and parallel, which is also in this unit as a review of fourth grade, are important to know. Now students will not be asked to construct different things, but they do need to know the definition of these things. Um, some middle school and high school courses may actually have students use a compass and a ruler to construct, but we want students to be able to identify perpendicular and parallel lines and know the definition of those. So review the vocabulary because geometry has lots of vocabulary words that they need to know because they're going to be assessed more on 2D shapes such as triangles. They're going to need to be able to classify triangles and know 
what's the difference between an equilateral or a scaling triangle or an isosceles triangle. So those vocabulary words are very, very important. Again, they're not going to have to construct a triangle. They're going to have to be able to recognize different types of triangles. And so in Study Island, it's going to be great, great practice because some triangles can maybe be classified in multiple ways. Like maybe this is a right triangle, but it's also a scaling triangle. So it's a scaling right triangle because the sides are all different, but it does have a right angle. So having students understand that things can be classified in multiple ways is the key goal of fifth grade geometry. Learning the vocabulary and learning how to classify shapes. So again, you're going to continue to go through this and here you go. Um, it, see it, how it talks about, there's two names, there's a right equilateral or right isosceles and things like that. So understanding the vocabulary of all of these um, different terms as well as acute, obtuse, and right is perfect for um, the triangles. Then we're going to head over to quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals can get tricky. Quadrilaterals have four sides, but there's lots of different ways to classify quadrilaterals. Um, Sometimes students think that a square only can be a square, but technically a square can also be called a rectangle. So they can be classified in different ways. This is where understanding parallel lines and perpendicular lines that make a right angle are really important. Again, you do not, students will not have to draw these shapes, but they will need to be able to identify these shapes. And they will need to know when something's needs to be classified in more than one way. Um, here again is vocabulary like opposites, opposite sides are parallel. Um, so the vocabulary I think is the trickiest part of this entire unit. I think this is a great activity. I have four sides, what shape am I? Well that's the basic name would be quadrilateral but then when you start classifying all the attributes of that shape it gets a little more complicated. Now as we go through the unit, again, it's going to say construct triangles and quadrilaterals. This is more of an enrichment activity, and if your child is struggling in math, I would talk to your homeroom teacher about maybe skipping some of these lessons if they have not been skipped already, because constructing the shapes is not a requirement. So um, I'm going to kind of skim over these lessons. They are fun for kids that want to build and like to draw. It might motivate them to love um, math and to get involved with some of the geom geometry standards. But again, this is not a heavily weighted content area. Um, again, they're going to talk about angles and triangles. This is also a little bit of enrichment. The main focus of these lessons is to help students understand that no matter how the triangle is shaped, a triangle always has 180 degrees within their angles and so just finding the missing missing angles is a great math review so that they can um, know that a right angle is 90 plus 30 more how much more does it take to get 180 so this is just a great basic math review knowing that a triangle has 180 degrees is not going to be assessed on the, the end of the year assessment but this like I said is a great review of computation and understanding missing values. So again, after you go through triangles, they're going to do the same thing with quadrilaterals. And it's fun to know that, you know, a quadrilateral is basically two triangles put together, no matter how, what the shape of the quadrilateral and no matter how the quadrilateral is drawn, if it has four sides, it's always going to have 360 degrees within the shape or 180 degrees within the shape or no, I'm sorry, 360, a triangle has 180, there's two triangles within a quadrilateral, so we have 360. So it's kind of fun to explore and explain um, how this works. They can also understand that a straight line has 180 degrees. So again, this is not going to be something they're assessed on, but it is a great way to review computation skills. And here is additional practice to say, Okay, if we add up all of these and we know it's 360, how much is that missing angle? Now, as you progress through the unit, you are um, going to have some different things. This core focus is one of the um, 
best things to focus on in the unit. Again, you can skip this unit and come back to it right before the end of the year assessment, before the Georgia Milestones assessment, and save it for when it comes up in Study Island. So that is not a problem as long as it gets accomplished at some point through the, throughout the year. That is perfectly fine. Um, again, vocabulary I think is the hardest part of this entire um, unit and just understanding what perpendicular means, what um, parallel, and just knowing the difference. And so it's great to review those types of skills. And see this says which category of two-dimensional shapes applies to all of these shapes. So it's important to understand that things may be irregular. This even though it's a quadrilateral and has four sides, it's not a regular quadrilateral that has equal sides, but it, it's these are all still quadrilaterals no matter how they're drawn because they have four sides. So as you continue to go through this unit, um, you'll then end up reaching the fractions, which if you skip this unit, we'll have that review very shortly. What I want to talk to you about is um, some other resources that we have available. I'm going to put a link to a virtual geo board because as you're explaining shapes, it's fun to use geo boards and there's also um, iPad free apps that have geo boards on them so students can actually practice drawing different sizes of shapes and talking about the vocabulary. So here is an equilateral um, triangle. We could also make a quadrilateral and these are both quadrilaterals. We have two right angles in this quadrilateral. This side is parallel to this side. These two sides will intersect. Uh, um, you could also talk about this line is perpendicular to this line. So it's great to review the vocabulary maybe in a fun interactive way. The other thing I want to share with you is the extended problems that is at the end of this unit. I feel like most students may benefit from skipping this activity and waiting until fractions and decimals have been covered more thoroughly. I love the discussion and the questions that are asked within this unit. It says, DeMonte drew this design for his contest. He numbered each section from one to seven and used an eight to number the shape of the whole garden. So it talks about what's the shape name of section number one. So it does review the basic shapes, but it does get a little bit more complicated and it says complete the chart to show what fraction the flower bed is of the whole garden. So it says what fraction of the entire garden is section one. So you may need to review some fourth grade skills on fractions or wait till after the fraction unit is taught in fifth grade. But when you look at the whole garden, we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve squares. The fraction of this first section would be one, and then we put those together, two of the twelve which could be simplified to one-sixth. So that's what we would do to find the fraction of the whole. So that is one section and it is again a great activity and it is something that may need a little bit of review before you head right into this unit. Again here's another one about um, the shapes and submitting a different design garden. But a, I would also review the answer key so that you can get familiar with what is being expected. As you scroll through, um, you're also going to come across some decimal activities. That is why um, you may want to skip this unit until after decimals have been introduced because that's coming after fractions. We're going to talk about fractions and decimals and how to compute with both. So this is where they're making a shopping list and seeing how much they need to spend. Again, this is a great, great activity. These are the type of things that we want students to do. We want them to apply their math to real world situations, but it could be a little challenging for some students at this point. So depending on the needs of your student, feel free to modify and um, skip this unit as needed. What I would like to show with you as well is that you can use pattern blocks to ta teach that same concept of fractions of a whole. There are printable 
um, pattern blocks available. There's also virtual pattern blocks where you can kind of manipulate. So this is how many triangles are in this quadrilateral how, or parallelogram. How many triangles are in this trapezoid? So it's a great way to review vocabulary and fractions at the same time. I'll provide a link to that. Also, um, I will provide some links to some other activities that you can um, explore fractions and parts of a whole. Now, in this one that I just shared with you, you can get more complicated and go to other links within this web page, and it says what fraction of the design is blue. So if you count up all the triangles, you'll know that there's 24, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of those 24 are blue. You simplify that to 4 twelfths and end up with 1 third. So again, great activities, very important activities for sure so that you um, can help your child be a mathematical thinker. There are online pattern blocks, so um, I'll provide a link to that as well. And you just click on things and you can move them around and you can also you know, turn the shapes to see how many um, you know, will fit on a specific. So how many triangles make up a hexagon? So that is definitely something to explore. Again, um, there are tons of these websites out there. So if you um, do a Google search on interactive pattern blocks, there's also printable pattern blocks so you can print them out and actually use them and manipulate them at home. The other thing I want to share with you is um, don't forget about LearnZillion because LearnZillion has lots of videos that really focus on the key grade level standards. I'm going to type in one of the codes that I'm going to share with you in the newsletter. And so when you just type in that code, it's automatically going to come up as classified quadrilaterals in a hierarchy. So when you cl click on that video, it's going to go over specifically what those grade level standards are for fifth grade. It will review a lot of the vocabulary and then you go to classify triangles. So definitely check out those LearnZillion videos. I'm going to go back because you can also create a free account. Now I am going to log into my account to show you a few tips and tricks on what to do once you create a free account. Okay, once you create a free account, you will also have access to this Common Core Navigator tab. And when you click on that Common Core Navigator tab, you can go straight to fifth grade. And when you get to fifth grade, you will see all of the different standards. So right here is geometry. And so each of these file folders is going to open up something. So this is understand categories and subcategories of two-dimensional shapes. So these were made by two different teachers. Again, this one talks about how to compare triangles, how to compare quadrilaterals. So there's lots of links to great activities. If your child is struggling with some of those heavily weighted content areas, definitely check out this fifth grade tab because this numbers and operations in base 10 is going to be critical. This number and operations and fractions is also going to be critical. So check out the different folders. Sometimes your teacher may relate to a different teaching style. So every single folder is created by a different teacher who uses different models to explain their thinking. Again, definitely feel free to hold off on teaching this Unit 2 geometry if it is not skipped in your lesson already. Um, the next video that I'm going to create is going to deal with fractions, which is a big concept and it can be a confusing concept. So we definitely want to go back to fourth grade and third grade skills if fractions are confusing because having a strong foundation in the understanding of fractions is critical before we start computing with fractions. I hope this has been beneficial and check out all the resources in the newsletter and definitely reach out to your homeroom teacher if you have any questions or concerns about the geometry unit and some of the things that were covered in Unit 1. Thank you.